Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to film my September favorites. I have one thing specifically that I want to talk about, like so bad, okay, two things that I specifically want to talk about, but otherwise it's a relatively short favorites this month, but what I have to talk about, I'm just oh, I'm over the moon excited about. First, as always, I am going to talk about my book favorite. And my book favorite of the month is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I've gotten lots of questions like how I got to read this, but uh, it was sent to me, so that's why. But I'm so, so, so happy that I got to read this early. I love this book and I'm actually, I think I'm going to film this next or maybe later today, like my review for it. Uh, my review for it, I know has to wait until the book actually comes out. So it will be up in November. But I love this book. Uh, I can't really tell you anything about it other than like what the synopsis already says. But I can, I can say that this has such an interesting like plot and the concept of it is really interesting and I haven't seen it in book form anything like this there is a movie that is slightly like the idea of it but it's definitely different but like it reminded me I'm like no don't do it it happened badly in that movie but then it didn't really go along with that at all it was just like the initial concept I guess but I can't I'm just blabbering I'm sorry I'm like teasing but I really did want to talk about how how much I love this and just let it be known that it's up there with slammed it's tied at slammed for me do you guys know how much I love Slammed? A lot, so you should pre-order this. Next I'm going to talk about my favorite TV show, Netflixy favorite thing for the month. This isn't actually on Netflix, it's an HBO show and so I watched it through Xfinity. But oh my god, this is the thing that I'm so excited about. Like, I'm excited about November 9, but True Detective. Oh my god, I think it's my new favorite show. Like, I, I thought about it for a while and it's just so different and dark and very pessimistic and it's all I'm about now. The first season, I guess I should specify the second season, I'm still trying to, you know, troop through. Troop through is not the right saying. Be a, be a trooper, a good camper, a, I don't know. The first season is what I want to talk about because that's what I love. If you don't follow me on Snapchat, I have like been snapping about it like crazy all the time and I even snapped like two of my favorite scenes and those two scenes, not technically one, I guess it's two. Uh, my favorite TV movie, favorite scene, monologue in the history of like TV movies. That was like the most scramble way of saying like, it's my favorites. I've always like watched Matthew McConaughey in movies like rom-coms, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, one of my like favorite go back watch all the time movies. I almost have it memorized. But like, I've never taken him as a very serious actor and I haven't seen Dallas Buyers Club, but I intend to now. I think that if they had anybody else for Russ Cole's character like acting him, I don't think the show would have been as successful. Like that is how much. Like I love the writing of the show, the acting was just superb. I cannot recommend it enough. But if you like happy shit, you're not, you're probably not gonna like it. And uh, I guess I should specify, true detective makes it sound like true crime, detective-y work. And yeah, that is the center of it, but it's about the people. And man, I am having such a hard time explaining the show, just, Please give it two episodes, just two episodes. My favorite episode is episode five. I watched it probably five times. It is called uh, The Secret of All Fate, I want to say. The Secret Fate of All Life. I remembered it now. Yeah, it's just, it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. And I'm going to read you a little bit from it. It's really dark, kind of, I'm going to say this word wrong, nihilistic, nihilistic. I don't know how to say it. I've never actually heard it before, but I know of it. Oh, uh, maybe it'll give you an idea of the writing of it, but even in my voice, like my reading voice, my serious poetry reading voice, it's not gonna do justice to how it was acted. And so it's just, it's so much better than I could ever make it sound. I'm gonna read a little. Death created time to grow the things that it would kill. You are reborn, but into the same life that you've always been born into. When you can't remember your lives, you can't change your lives. That is the terrible and secret fate of all life. You are trapped by that nightmare you keep waking up into. I just, I love it. I've gone out and I've actually, I've researched what uh, the writer for the show, Nick Pizzolatto, yeah, Pizzolatto, what he read while writing the TV show and stuff. And without spoiling, because I really do want everyone to watch it, uh, there are a lot of different like things brought in, like old mythologies, like the Yellow King and and Titero, lots of stuff. And so I've looked up uh, this really like unknown philosopher called Thomas Ligotti, L-I-G-O-T-T-I. And I purchased one of his books and I'm loving it. And it's it's very just so Rust Cole. It is so Rust Cole. But all right, I'm done talking about that. I just, I love it so much. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Now I'm going to talk about my random favorites. And one of my random ones is this Campbell from Bath and Body Works. This is one that I've gone back to for a long time. 
I really love the smell of eucalyptus. Uh, this is the Stress Relief Eucalyptus and Spearmint Scented Candle. Um, I've been sick off and on throughout the month and this just smells like really bright and energetic. Yeah, I don't know. I like to smell it when I'm sick. It doesn't remind me of Vicks Vapor Rub, but it's like comforting in the same way that like the Vicks Vapor Rub is. And speaking of Bath and Body Works, I'm going back to like old comforty smells. Um, I started using the Moonlight Path Body Lotion. This shit ain't moisturizing really, but it's what my mom always used. I don't know, it smells like childhood to me. It reminds me of driving to middle school with my mom and we would always go by Sonic and get sweet tea in the morning. That's what it reminds me of. So, I don't know, I've been using this. I've been like, I don't know, smell is one of the strongest like memory triggers. And then there's this candle, which I bought like not that long ago. So that's why I'm not mentioning it, but it will be in next month's favorites, I can promise. Uh, it's the Target brand, it's White Citron. I can't put my finger on what it is that it smells like, but it reminds me of like Christmas and it kind of reminds me of my mom's old perfume and it reminds me of the way our house used to smell I don't know so memory lane man that's where I've been this past month but yeah so I've been really liking this this next thing I'm about to show you you can't judge me for it also you can't judge how filthy dirty it is because it was in the laundry pile and it has cat hair on it because I've been sleeping in it and wearing it all, all day like my thing is wearing pajamas as much as possible and I can get away with not wearing a bra while I wear this so extra plus. I hate props. They're restrictive and uncomfortable. So you can see the pattern. This shirt is a big men's plaid shirt from Walmart that I got for $10 and it is better than the ones that I have from Old Navy. I've been wearing it as a jacket where I'll just throw it on over like a black shirt that I have or a t-shirt or like a tank top or something because it's still really hot in Houston. So I don't know, it makes me like embrace fall, but then also be practical because it's like 95 degrees here. So I can like take it off because it's a jacket. I don't know, I've really been loving it and I have one in red and black, but this is the color and I really like this color actually more than the red and black. And is it bad that I'm thinking about going back and like buying this in a size that actually would fit me? Cause I got it in like a men's like two X or something. So it's like huge, but I wanted it to be huge so that I could wear it like with leggings, like a little dress. Now I'm going to talk about my music favorites. These are weird. Well, one of them's weird. One of them's really weird. I've been listening to Halsey. I don't know who she is. She sings Hurricane and New Americana or Americano. I get it confused with the coffee. But I don't know what I would describe her as. I wouldn't say she's pop, but more on the side of pop than I would listen to. Kind of like alternative, don't give a fuck sort of music, but poppy. I don't know how to explain it. If you have a better explanation of Halsey, please tell me. Uh, but I've been listening to her lately and... Yeah, she kind of just has that, I don't give a fuck about what you think sort of attitude and it really comes across in her lyrics. What were my favorite songs? I really like Gasoline, I Walk the Line, In There Somewhere, and oh, Strange Love and Trouble. I've been really liking those. I've been, yeah, just listening to a whole bunch of her. I also have like this one song, which I wasn't going to mention, but then I just realized it because it was next to Halsey in my playlist. I've been really liking this one particular song by Julia Stone called Horse with the Wings. And I gotta see if I can remember the lyrics just by heart. I've been trying really hard to memorize them. You talk to me like a Michelle you found on the beach and you put your ear to me and you hear how clear I sound and you say, sing me a song like I've nothing better to do than sing songs for you. So you hang me on the wall, so I'm taller than before, and I feel like I might fall, but I don't. So that's the lyric, and I really like it. And then I feel like I can't go through a favorites video without mentioning one makeup item. And I want to mention one, but it's so far away, but I've used it in one of my old, or my old, <laughs> it's been like two videos ago, my latest makeup tutorial, which is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores. I really like it, and like I like how my skin feels. I'm like started using it like instead of just under my eyes, like all right here, because I'm like, I don't know. I like it a lot. So I've been really liking that, but I'm too lazy to get up and get it. And I've also really been into this LA Girl Matte Liquid Lip Gloss, but don't let that confuse you. It's like a liquid lipstick. It is in the shade Rebel. Again, I wore it in my last like makeup video. If you haven't seen it, I'll have it linked up here in the card. But yeah, it looks a lot darker than it does in the tube. Like it comes off almost black, but maybe it's because I'm doing like a thick layer. I want to play around with this to see if I can actually get it to be this color. I want to read some poetry slash random quotes for you slash pretty much all from True Detective. So stick around if you want to hear it. I'm going to say some of my Thomas Ligotti stuff because I've been reading him about the past like couple days. And this is the very end of September when I'm filming this. So I kind of want to save it for next month because I plan on finishing his book then and I want to really talk about it then. Mm, there's this one part and I don't know what it was, but it kind of hit me recently and I understood it. And I just, I felt like I understood it when I first heard it, but like I, I, I understood it. Uh, and it's of course from True Detective. Do you know the good years when you're in them? 
or do you just wait for them till you get ass cancer and realize the good years came and went? Because there's a feeling, you might notice it sometimes, this feeling like life has slipped through your fingers, like the future's behind you, like it's always been behind you. I've asked my friend Megan, you guys know her, I talk to her about my writing and stuff often, and there was this one time we were out and we were having dinner and I said to her something, and I don't want to use my exact words because I really do want to use this like in poetry, not that, you know, I'm accusing you guys of anything, but you know, you want to keep like your really good <laughs> like lines or ideas to yourself. But I was asking her like, is there a word for missing something that hasn't happened yet? And that is like the closest other articulation I have ever heard to that. And this is before I watched True Detective that I like I had this moment. I mean maybe it was last month that I talked to her about it. I don't know. But I don't know. There's something in that that makes you feel less alone in the way that you feel. Because I don't know. I, I internalize everything that I think and I say and I think no one else feels this way or no one else has had these thoughts. And it's kind of comforting as twisted as that is to know that someone else felt it in some way even if it's not the same. I don't know. I'm jabbering now. I'm sorry. But that was, I don't know, I hope I made my points. I realized in trying to find one specific quote from True Detective that it kind of spoils things and then the other one is reading an entire scene in which the context of the scene is important and so it kind of doesn't have the same effect so I don't want to do it, I don't want to read it anymore, so I'm going to read other stuff. I was reading Louise Gluck, Glick, Louise Glick from earlier in my English class where it was a really complicated class on like affect and aesthetics and figuration and stuff and but so I was reading her and I found a couple of her poems that I really did like so I'm gonna read a couple lines for you the silence is my companion now I ask of what did my soul die and the silence answers if your soul died whose life are you living and when did you become that person that's from echoes I always want to say Persephone or personophone but I'm never sure so Persephone personophone um the wanderer they say there is a rift in the human soul which was not constructed to belong entirely to life. I don't even know what that means. I just think it's really beautifully said. <laughs> this is from David Leviathan, or Leviathan, Leviathan. We always see our worst selves, our most vulnerable selves. We need someone else to get close enough to tell us what's wrong, someone we trust. So that is all I have in the way of quotes this month. I promise I will have like a whole bunch more next month. I'm really excited about it. I like, I would like a whole bunch more, like surprise, boo. I'm, not, I'm really excited for Halloween. Do you see how much my brain just goes from here to here to here? I am a squirrel. I'm a squirrel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any requests for other videos or book tags or tags in general that you would like to see me do, then please leave those down there in the comments. Breath. And I will see you guys later next time on Bookworm Stock. Bye. Oh my god, I talk so fast. Oh, pose. Pose it.